All right, so we've talked about matter, we've talked about chemical and physical properties, um, we've talked about the states of matter. So now we need to talk about how we would actually go and we would go to the lab and do some science with all of this. In order to do science, we have to make measurements. And when we make a measurement, we've got to be really clear on what we're talking about. And every measurement provides some information. It provides a magnitude of the measurement, which is going to be the number. It's going to be pro provide a standard of comparison for that me measurement, which is the unit. And it's also going to indicate how well we know the measurement, which is going to be its uncertainty. So if you take and you put, say, 15.5 gallons of gas in your car, you're going to have a number, 15.5, a gallon. Gallon is going to be a standard of comparison. We know how big that is compared to, for example, a quart or a liter, and an uncertainty. And that's going to be into the number of digits that are in that number. And measurements are the basis of providing information in all the laws and theories in chemistry. So any measurement without a unit is pretty much meaningless. We do know that we do some so consistently that we think we know what they mean, but we really should still be a little bit more careful. If we measure our blood pressure and we get 120 over 80, it would be really nice to know 120 over 80 what. That is, in fact, millimeters of mercury, which is a unit of pressure that we'll talk about in Chapter 9. In chemistry, we tend to use an updated version of the metric system that's called the um, international system or the SI unit system, and it's been used since about 1964. We kind of use it and we kind of don't, but let's go through and make sure that we understand the metric system as we need it and the SI units as we need them as well. So SI base units. So the base units are the comparison in which we're going to make our measurements. For length, base unit is a meter. For mass, base unit in SI is a kilogram. In chemistry, almost consistently, we are going to use gram. Instead, the physicists tend to use kilograms. The rest of these kind of make sense. Time is in seconds. Temperature, there's multiple units of temperature. In the lab, we tend to measure things in degrees Celsius, but in the SI base unit, the unit for temperature is a Kelvin symbolized by a K. The amount of substance is probably the most important in chemistry, and that is a mole, and we'll use that as well. All right, let's look at some metric prefixes. These are also prefixes are used in the SI units, um, SI units just being a subset of the metric units. So metric prefixes. These are going to allow us to take and describe a measurement in terms of being big or small without having to use very large numbers. So for example, if we had um, oh, 100,000 of something, instead of writing 100,000 of something, we could take and use a prefix to explain how big that value is. So in the metric system, we use these pretty consistently. If we want to do something that's really tiny, we can use femto, and the femto is 10 to the minus 15. So if we're going to use these, and we say that a femto is shorthand for f, and f means 10 to the minus 15, these are prefixes, meaning we can put them in front of any metric or SI base unit. So a femto second would be 10 to the minus 15 seconds. The ones I need you to use are or memorize are these guys right here and a few more of the large ones. If we had, for example, a micro, a micro we symbolize by the Greek letter mu. A micro means 10 to the minus 6. And because this is a prefix, we would put it in front of the base unit. So, for example, okay. micro is 10 to the minus 6. So if I want a micro liter, I would have 10 to the minus 6 liters. And we're going to use this again to describe things that are big and small. So we have the ones I need you to know are nano, micro, milla, centa, and deca. Nano is 10 to the minus 9. Micro is 10 to the minus 6. Milla is 10 to the minus 3. Centa is 10 to the minus 2. And deca is 10 to the minus 1. We've got a multiple ways that we can do this, and you're going to have to figure out what makes sense. So for example, a centimeter. We know that a centimeter 
is 10 to the minus 2. So we can say a centimeter is 10 to the minus 2 meters. And again, this is a prefix, so it goes in front. We can actually say that a centimeter is going to be 0 0.01 meters because that's the same as 10 to the minus 2. Or equally, we could take and we could divide and put this on the other side and say that um, if we want to do that, um, 10 to the minus 2 is the same as 1 over 100. So a centimeter is 1 over 100 meters. If we cross multiplied, we would say there are 100 centimeters in a meter. Now, you're going to have to make absolutely certain that you can convert in between these and you have to figure out a way that makes sense to you. Sometimes I think the simplest way is to simply memorize them as prefixes and use a centimeter is 10 to the minus 2 meters, knowing this as your conversions, as your prefix. The other ones I need you to know as you go from big, um, from small to big, I need you to know a kilo. A kilo is 10 to the third or a thousand. And I need you to know mega. Mega is 10 to the sixth, which is going to be a million. Giga and Terra, we don't tend to use very much in chemistry. So the SI units or the metric units, um, they're all, again, they're based on a standard of meters. Now the distance that light travels in a vacuum <laughs> that long in one second. A meter is just a little bit longer, about three inches longer than a yard. That you don't need to know. What I need you to know are your metric prefixes so you can convert. Um, within the metric system, if I ask you to convert out of the metric system, I will give you the conversions. So relative comparison. So a meter is about uh, 39 inches. A yard is about 36. So if you want to compare them, we're fairly used to inches. There are 2.54 centimeters exactly in an inch. Remember centa being 10 to the minus 2. So a centimeter is 10 to the minus 2 meters. Unfortunately, what we tend to do is say that there are 100 centimeters in a meter rather than using this conversion. It's just a mess. You're going to have to figure out a way that works for you. I would never ask you to memorize these. I will give you these if you need them. The SI base unit for temperature is Kelvin or Kelvins. Kelvin is not a degree Kelvin, so there's no symbol there. So we use it just as it is, as compared to degrees Celsius, which we use the degree sign. We degree Celsius is what we use when we make measurements in the lab. Kelvins is what we tend to use when we use it with some of the laws. The nice part about the temperature in Kelvins is that this is the absolute temperature scale. Because zero Kelvins is absolute zero, meaning that there's no heat remaining as compared to zero degrees Celsius, which just means that water freezes, which is kind of a ridiculous thing to describe a zero with. All right, we need to look at a couple of derived units. Derived meaning maybe made up from some of the other base units. And one of the ones that we use most extensively is volume. You know that if we have a volume of something, we have its length times its width times its height, which are three units of measurements. If we're working in chemistry. The base unit for volume in chemistry is the liter. We shorthand this with a capital L. A liter, by definition, is a decimeter. Cubed, a decimeter, the P is 0.1. So if we take 0.1 meters and we cube it such that this is 0.1 meters, 0.1 meters, and 0.1 meters, and we cube that value, we are going to have one liter. Now, the other thing that we use very frequently in chemistry is a milliliter. A milliliter, milla, is 10 to the minus 3. A milliliter is then going to be 0 0.001 or 10 to the minus 3 liters. That's also 1 over 1,000. And we frequently say that there are either 1 milliliter in 
10 to the minus 3 liters or that there are a thousand milliliters in a liter. Now, cubic centimeters. One cubic centimeter, one cm cubed is identical to one milliliter. And in medical terms, that's frequently one cc cubic centimeters. And you need to memorize those as well. They're used interchangeably throughout chemistry. So again, a cubic centimeter is a cm cubed, which is the same as one mil. So we're going to have one milliliter is exactly the same as one centimeter cubed, which is the same as one cc, and that there are a thousand milliliters in a liter. Density is a ratio of mass over volume. Density we frequently do as we put here and we go this, where this is mass, and this is volume. It's a little juvenile, but what the heck. In the lab, we're going to use units of grams per centimeter cubed for solids and liquids. And we're going to use grams per liter for gases just because they are, the density is so low. <clears throat> 